Hi everyone, welcome to another Artist Loft 101 drawing class. Um, I'm happy to be partnering with Michaels to bring you this ongoing series uh, of which there have been many classes so far. Uh, my name is Adrian Hodge and I'm a teaching artist based in Austin, Texas. I'm also a practicing artist, so I, I show my work and sell my work. Um, which you see behind me in my studio space here. And um, I teach independent classes on Zoom, um, always on Instagram, posting and sharing. And uh, so if you want to follow me uh, on Instagram, I'll, I'll share my handle again. Um, and Jimena just said it at Adrian Hodge Art. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dive in today. Today's class is on perspective drawing. So we're going to be covering just the basics of linear perspective and uh, drawing some very simple boxes in one, two, and three point perspective. So uh, I've been referring to this class all along up until now by sticking with organic objects. For the most part, we've done a lot of still life items like fruit and flowers and things like that. And I've been purposefully avoiding using anything geometric in my, my still lifes that I have shared with the class so far. And uh, so tonight, tonight, we're finally going to introduce some geometry and linear perspective. Um, I do like to keep it super simple, but I maybe will go a little quickly for, for some people. So we're going to have all different types of learners in the room. If I do go a little fast, just keep in mind that this class will be is being recorded and you can uh, wait and watch the recording tomorrow on YouTube or on the Michaels website. And that way you can pause it, slow it down if I go a little fast. Um, but to be able to cover all three and to tell you all the information that I want to tell you, um, I'm going to just keep a, a steady rhythm um, going in this. Yeah, so um, go ahead and switch to my tabletop view. I'm doing things a little different tonight, so I'm going to be a little bit out of the screen when I'm sitting at my uh, my desk here. So, um, but we're we're spotlighting my desk. So, anyway, uh, so yeah, tag your work. Anything that you do tonight, if you want to tag your your box drawings. Um, with Make It With Michaels or Michaels Classes, uh, or you can tag me at Adrian Hodge Art on Instagram. Um, and then if you want to check out my, any of my independent classes, you can go to my link tree, which uh, Jimena can drop in the chat. And then there's just some of my, my personal work there. All right. So whenever I teach this in person, linear perspective, I tend to uh, talk quite a bit about um, art history, but for the sake of moving it along and, and getting to the, the drawing aspect of the class, I'm going to just use a few printouts here, and I'm just going to use a, a couple of images from art history, and these are the three different types of perspective that we're going to be talking about tonight. So. You've got a uh, one point perspective, two point perspective, and three point perspective. Uh, and I'm going to explain the differences between all of them. So, but before I get too um, far into the explanation of it, I want to uh, do my little mini art history lesson here. So, I've got this painting from the pre Renaissance era right here that zoom in on it a little bit closer. And then I've got a painting from the Renaissance era after this wonderful gentleman Bruno Lesci came along and figured out uh, the ways of linear perspective, which actually had already been known about in the art world, but just about a thousand years prior, there are paintings in Pompeii that show an understanding of linear perspective. But then we had the Middle Ages, where a lot of that knowledge was lost. And then you had uh, Greek and Roman artists, you know, really trying super hard to show depth in, uh, in these paintings. 
but they were their hearts were in the right place, I like to say, but they were still missing the mark. So in the chat, uh, and I'm gonna let Jimena kind of uh, sift through the chat for, for me, um, but she's gonna tell me uh, your responses. Tell me what you're seeing in this particular image that feels wrong in regards to, and I have to use the quote fingers because there's nothing wrong with the painting. It's a lovely painting, but in regards to linear perspective, what is happening here that makes it not like what we see with our eyes in the, the actual world? Okay, so we have um, the castle lacks depth, crowding, um, the people in the castle are too big, castle is too small, heads far away are too large, um, castle waltz is too bright and solid, all the people are the same size, flat, every same, uh, everything on the same plane. We have so many comments. Okay, yes, these are all wonderful comments and these are all correct. Yes, this, the most specific thing, well, the thing that jumps out at me the most is, yeah, the heads are way too big coming out of that castle. Um, they're the same size as the heads in the foreground. So in the actual world, the way that our eyes depict uh, the world around us, we don't see the world this way. We see things that look more like this, right? People who are in the foreground, um, their heads are going to be much larger than the people's heads in the middle ground. And the people who are in the far background, their heads are gonna be teeny tiny, right? We're not gonna see that much detail. Okay, so some other responses that I heard were the castle, um, the, the size of the castle feels wrong. Um, and that is correct as well. If, I mean, there's, it's really confusing where the castle is in the plane, right? You could assume that the castle is closer because we're seeing the big heads coming out, but then it feels smaller. And it's like, are these giant people coming out of this castle? What's going on, right? And then, so what we're speaking about there is the atmospheric perspective, the idea that things get smaller as they go back in space. When you see a car coming up over the horizon and you see the car really tiny in the distance, and then it gets, it appears larger and larger until it's passing you, you're not thinking, wow, that's a really teeny tiny car. You understand that the car is just far away from you and that that's its actual size when it's passing right in front of you, right? So what we wanna do in a work of art is depict how we actually see the world, right? Because, or at least that's what we're trying to do with realism. Okay, so the other thing I wanna talk about is the linear perspective, the lines. So um, when Bruno Leschi came along, what he did was he, viewed the world through a fixed point. So when we talked about thumbnail drawings recently in another class, I talked about fixing your thumb in a way so that you create a viewfinder. And that comes from the, the Renaissance creating this fixed point of view so that when we do that, it appears that the, uh, the lines, the typically the horizontal lines that are that are parallel and straight when we're facing them, when those lines are facing away from us in, uh, in linear perspective, it appears that those lines are converging at a fixed point on the horizon that we call a vanishing point. And I say it appears that way because those lines aren't actually uh, receding in that way. They're not actually becoming angular lines. And we call those orthogonal lines, by the way. And I'm not going to be writing down vocabulary words, but if you want to Google more about the history of perspective and learn all about it, it's fascinating. And I could talk about it all day, honestly, but I'm, I'm going to just stick to these two images and then move on. Um, and if you want to Google, you know, vocabulary words and, and really be uh, studious about it, you're welcome to do that as well. But um, Orthogonal lines are the lines that we can trace to a vanishing point. And um, I will uh, be tracing some of those in just a moment. And we're going to draw some boxes together. So we're going to draw them together. But I just want you to understand that these, so these lines on the, the tiles of the, the plaza, the piazza, are, um, they appear to be converging to a fixed point um, on the horizon. So the horizon line is 
not a real thing. It's a thing that our eyes um, appear to see, right? If you're driving in a car, the horizon line is going to continue to change as you change your position in the world. So it rests at the viewer's eye line. And so if we're looking at this, um, this painting again, it's very unclear where the horizon line would be because we're unclear on where we are standing in regards to that castle. Um, but there is evidence that the artists here understood orthogonal lines or that there was you know, a diagonal happening. But if I take my ruler and try to trace where uh, those diagonal lines are pointing to, they're definitely not angling towards a fixed point, a, a vanishing point on the horizon line as they would appear to do in, in the real world as we see things. Um, okay, and then the other thing to point out is how when we are viewing landscapes or we're, we're looking at the world across a great distance, we see a lot of detail on the things that are right in front of us in front of us and then we don't see a lot of detail on things that are far away so here in austin if i drive in the hill country i know that the landscape close to me is brown and you know maybe yellow like if, if we haven't had a rain in a long time like the hills and hill country might i might be seeing lots of like earthy tones and yellows on the the landscape right in front of me but in the distance i'm going to see hills that appear to be blue they're not actually blue it's an atmospheric distortion that happens so when we see that in paintings we see that the artist had an understanding of atmospheric perspective um, which we're not seeing here we're seeing it maybe a little bit because like there's less detail on the things that are behind in the castle that are far away in the castle but we're not seeing that kind of blue haziness on anything in the distance. So, and we could look at a number of paintings like this from the pre-Renaissance era, and you would see similar things that we interpret as flat. All I really want you to understand is that when Brunelleschi came along, the magical thing that he did was he created a fixed point and he viewed what he was looking at through a fixed point where artists, beginning artists, tend to go wrong when they are drawing things using linear perspective is they will attempt to draw multiple sides of, of an object or um, of what they're seeing in front of them versus just the side of them that is visible to them. They will also um, change their perspective. They will move, like let's say I'm drawing a stack of books in front of me. If I start drawing that stack of books sitting in my chair, you know, kind of leaning over to the left, I'm going to have a wildly different perspective of that stack of books than I would if I were to lean to the right. And so to illustrate that, I've um, got some pictures here from uh, if anybody's ever visited the uh, Chicago, the uh, Art Institute at Chicago, there's a wonderful exhibit of these miniature, um, these miniature houses and castles and other, it's so cool. So this is all like a, a miniature house that I, I took a picture of. So you see my lovely glare from my, my iPhone on the, the glass that was in front of it. But since it's a miniature room, I was able to get these dramatically different views of the same room. So I'm just going to illustrate a little bit of the difference between uh, one, two, and, and then three point perspective. But specifically with this, I'm talking about one and two point perspective. OK, so um, usually when I teach this in a, a class in person, what I'll do is I'll have everybody go out into the hallway with me. And we look at the hallway, we look down the middle of the hallway and we say, okay, we're looking down the hallway. If we were to face, like I'm gonna use this image to just explain the difference here. If we were to face a painting on the wall, this is also from the, the Art Institute in Chicago. If we were to face this painting on the wall, the horizontal lines at the top and the bottom of the painting and the vertical lines on the side of the uh, painting are facing the viewer, right? So they appear as they actual, actually are. They are straight and they are parallel. And parallel means they would go on forever being straight. But if we were to view 
the painting that is over here on the, the side of the wall, the horizontal and vertical lines on the paint, well, the vertical lines are still, uh, are still straight and pretend they're straight. I realize this, this photograph is a little cockeyed, but um, the horizontal lines appear to become diagonal lines, right? And if I were to take my ruler and measure those horizontal lines, I could find a point on the uh, horizon line where those lines would intersect. So um, if we're looking down the center of the hallway, so pretend we're, you know, well, and you could even look if you have a hallway near nearby you, that's the best way to see it, is look down the center of the hallway, it will appear that all of the horizontal lines that are uh, traveling away from you, facing away from you, are they are becoming our orthogonal lines that we could trace to a, a, a vanishing point on the horizon. But the vertical lines will remain straight. So going back to this uh, image, this is one point perspective because I'm looking kind of in the, the middle of the room. So if I'm standing in the middle of the hallway, the middle of the room, the middle of train tracks, I'm only seeing one point on the horizon that it appears these orthogonal lines are intersecting at because I'm in the middle. But if I were to stand at the corner of the hallway in another room, and I look at the corner of the hallway, what I'm gonna end up seeing is a two point perspective because now like if I, so here I'm looking at the corner of this miniature bed, or sorry, I'm looking at the middle of the room and the side of the bed, right? Um, so I'm seeing one point perspective, but here I'm looking at the corner of the bed. So now everything on this side of the corner is traveling to a vanishing point on this side where those lines would meet on the horizon. And on this side of the bed, this side of the corner, I've got a second vanishing point. The vertical lines remain straight. So in one and two point perspective, the vertical lines remain straight and the horizontal lines that are traveling away from the viewer will appear to intersect um, at a fixed point on the, the horizon line. But again, that's gonna change depending on your point of view or your perspective. So that's why perspective drawing can be so confusing is if you're drawing from life, especially, and you're not drawing from a photograph, then uh, you have to be aware of your point of view and you have to fix your point of view and stick to that. If you move, then you're observing something completely different, right? It's like with this room where I shifted and I looked at the corner of the bed. Now I'm looking at an image in two point perspective. So I'll just continue using these examples and then we'll move on to, to drawing the boxes. Have I confused anybody yet? Do we have any big questions so far? Um, we don't have any questions right now. Um, I will, I do want to say something though. Uh, everyone in the chat, um, would you please mind sticking to stuff related to the class, please, as it's very distracting to, to a lot of people here. Thank you. You're free to go on, Adrian. Sorry about that. Thank you so much. Okay, so one point perspective, you can just think viewing something from the middle. So the middle of a road, the middle of a hallway, uh, the middle of train tracks. Train tracks are always like the standard image, it seems. And then two point perspective, you're looking at a corner. So the viewer is in the middle for one point perspective. The viewer is looking at a corner in two point perspective. So in two point perspective, all we've done is we've introduced a corner. Now we've got this corner that messes everything up. If I were to turn and just look at the side of this fence, you know, if I were to shift my perspective and only look at the side of this fence, then I would be seeing it in one point perspective. But I took the photograph standing at the corner of this fence. So I've got two point perspective. I've got every all the orthogonal lines on this side going to my vanishing point on the left and all of my orthogonal lines on the right side going to a vanishing point on the right. And then, but the vertical lines remain straight. So in one point perspective, my vertical lines, like my power lines here, those remain straight, even though they appear to get smaller as they go back in space. 
uh, they still remain straight and uh, perpendicular to the horizon. And I will sketch all this out when we sketch boxes in just a minute. So hopefully I won't lose anyone so far. Uh, and in two point perspective, my vertical lines also stay straight. So the vertical lines are not affected in one and two point perspective. The only thing that is affected are the horizontal lines that are traveling away from the viewer. If they're facing me, they're going to appear straight just like they are. Okay, and then once you've got that down, then you look at something in three point perspective. And what happens in three point perspective is the viewer is either far above or far below the horizon line. So now everything is, appears to be wonky. Now all of the horizontal lines. Um, you know, are, are affected, but also what's affected is the vertical lines. So the vertical lines are no longer straight. Now it appears that the vertical lines are also following a skewed um, angle, and those are going to be converging at a point far above or far below the horizon line, depending on the, the viewer's view. And let me just show you another example of a three point perspective here that photograph of a, of a big window drapery on the, the UT campus at the Texas Memorial Museum. Such a lovely, I'm like, I want these curtains. They're so tall. Uh, but yeah, so when you look at this or when you look at a skyscraper that appears, you know, this way when you're looking at it, you don't think, oh, I guess every you know, story on that building gets consecutively smaller and smaller as it goes higher. Like you're not thinking that, right? You're not thinking, oh, that window becomes more narrow towards the top. You're just understanding that you're viewing something from a skewed angle, right? So we, we understand all of these things when we view the world and it's pretty intuitive, but when it comes to drawing it in our, in our art, it, it really gets away from people just like in those pre-Renaissance era paintings. So here we've got our vertical lines converging and becoming orthogonal lines, and we can trace those to a line far above or far below the, the horizon line. Okay, so I think I'm ready to draw some boxes. Any questions up until this point? Yes, we have a couple of people confused about two point. Um, so I think they would, like if you could go into that a little more, but maybe you could do that as your, your drawing. Yes, I, I will come back to it. Also, uh, one thing that I find interesting, you know, I've, I've been teaching adults for um, almost a decade now, and um, I find that when I teach kids <laughs> this concept, because I've also taught, you know, I've taught all ages. Um, I taught middle school, high school, I've taught children over the years, um, just in private lessons and small groups, but I've really taught adults for the most part. And when I teach adults, they have a harder time wrapping their minds around this for some reason. Um, and especially one point perspective will be very tricky for a lot of adults. But then for some reason, when I get to two point perspective, it all makes sense. So if you're getting confused even more like into the lesson and like even into one point perspective, you're still like your boxes are not looking right just trust me and, and stick with it. And I'm willing to bet by the time we get to the end of drawing the boxes in two point perspective, it will make more sense. And if it still doesn't, then, then I will go back and repeat something. But since, like I said, we've got a, a recording of the video that people can refer back to later. I don't want to repeat too much. Um, okay. So I'm going to use a pretty light pencil for sketching right now. Um, and all you, I just realized I kind of glossed over the supplies. All you need is some sketching paper, a ruler, and uh, or a straight edge. You don't even necessarily need a ruler. Uh, a straight edge would work just fine. Um, just a nice, you know, a bookmark would be fine. A thin book, something that's got a straight edge that you can trace a line with. Um, it doesn't have to be a ruler. And then you're going to want an eraser. Uh, so that's all, and I'm using an H pencil so that my lines are nice and light and can be erased. And hopefully with my new document camera uh, set up here, you'll be able to see my lines um, with that H pencil better than 
previously. Um, if you are using a ruler, the easiest way to make sure that your line is not going to be wonky is to line up the edge of your uh, paper with one of the lines on your ruler and that way you'll know that you're making a straight line. That seems like a pretty obvious thing to say, but like I said, it's teaching adults sometimes. I'm like, oh, I think your line is just wrong. It's like if you're, you know, if you bump the ruler or bump your straight edge. So even with your book, try to line it up with the, the edge of the paper to make sure that you're holding it straight before you draw that first line. All right, and then we'll draw a nice fat dot in the center. And we'll label that VP for our vanishing point. And then just, I am going to illustrate just a few terms that I'm using, even though they are very basic terms and most of us know them, it's easy to get turned around and confused sometimes. So uh, that is a horizontal line. This is a vertical line. This is perpendicular lines or a line that is perpendicular. So when I say a vertical line is perpendicular to the horizon, that's what I mean. And then uh, parallel lines repeat and do not intersect. And then orthogonal lines are the lines that uh, that we trace to to the vanishing point. I'm not going to write all that out, but I just thought I'd put the vocabulary words there, even though I said I wasn't going to. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is draw a box. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect box. You could even freehand the front of the box, uh, but if you want to use your ruler or your straight edge, it doesn't have to be a square. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Just a box. I really doesn't matter if your box is perfect. We just want to get a sense of what happens to the sides and the bottom of this box in one point perspective. So drawing a box that is facing me and not perfect. <laughs> Mine's a little wonky just to show you it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then we are going to line up the corners of our box and we're going to draw a line tracing with our straight edge or a ruler to the vanishing point from all of the corners of the box. So I made a really funny angle here on this one, but I'm still going to try to draw the, the vanishing. Oh, that's really skinny. All right. Might draw one more kind of over to the side. You could draw it right above your your vanishing point too, but I just want one that's kind of off to the side. I'm just going to freehand it. All right, so tracing. And this is another one of those things where if you bump the ruler, if you have it lined up, but then you bump the ruler, then it's not going to be necessarily traced from that vanishing point anymore. So Adrian, um, apparently a couple of people have a frozen screen. It's not frozen for me. However, it is lagging. So oh. we, we don't see exactly what you're doing at the same time that you're doing it. Oh, hmm. So I don't know if there's any way to fix that. Uh, that's strange. I'm because I'm seeing my screen at the same time and it's it's doing it's not doing that for me. Right now it's fine, but when you start um, like moving around faster, it starts lagging for me and a, a bunch of people in the chat are saying that it's um, like frozen for them. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering if I don't know if the, the camera is like focusing with my movements. I'll try to make my movements a little slower. Okay, maybe that would work. Okay. Uh, all right, so I've traced my my orthogonal line. So those are, if I was viewing any other side of that uh, box, 
those lines would be facing me, right? But since those sides of the box are not facing me, they're facing away from me, they appear to become orthogonal lines, right? But uh, the side of the box that is facing me right here, uh, this line is straight and horizontal, right? So the back of the other side of this box has a straight horizontal line that is also facing me. So it would also appear straight. But um, the, the other side of this one is, is the same way. It is vertical and it's facing me and vertical lines don't change in one point perspective. So it remains straight and vertical as well. So where I see people going wrong with one point perspective is they start to make the back of the box also a diagonal line, like they'll put a diagonal on the, the other side of the box. And so I came up with this very cheesy way to remember it for adults, um, even though when I've tried using this with kids, they will roll their eyes at me, but adults seem to love it. Okay, so this, this side of the box has, a, this line has a buddy, right? So if these two lines are buddies, because these two horizontal lines are facing me, right? They're buddies. And so they're doing the same thing. Well, these two lines are also buddies and they're doing the same thing. These two lines are buddies. And so they're doing the same thing. They're traveling to the vanishing point. Um, so just kind of think of it that way. Like what is the buddy line to that line, right? It's, if it's the side of the box that's facing you, then it's gonna remain straight. Um, if it's traveling away from you, then it's going to become an orthogonal line. So let's do another box this time. We'll do it uh, below the horizon line. And if you wanna do it on the other side, and below the horizon. All right, and then we'll trace our corner lines to our vanishing point. And then to close it in, so this vertical line is facing me. So on the other side of that box, well, and vertical lines don't change in one point perspective. So that's the other thing, it, but it's facing me and it's a vertical line. And this horizontal line back here is also facing me. So it stays horizontal. Uh, let's put a door on the side of this box. So if we had a door right here on the side of the box, it would be it would have vertical lines on the side of the door, right? And then at the top of the door, it would have a horizontal line that would follow what this, this line is doing and it's an orthogonal line. So the top of the door needs to angle towards our vanishing point, but the other side of the door would remain straight and vertical. So, We've been talking about contour lines since uh, the first of these classes, which I will actually be repeating on Wednesday, the introduction to graphite and uh, drawing forms class. So in that class, we talked about um, how the contour lines on a piece of fruit change in elevation uh, to the surface of the form and on an organic form like uh, a piece of fruit that's going to shift depending on uh, the piece of fruit, right? If it had a big flat bruise right here, those lines might be straight on that part of the, the flat part of the bruise, etc. Um, so if we were to put some contour, like cross hatching lines on the top of our box here, that would make it a little complicated, right? Because all of the, all of the lines that were previously parallel, any contours here are gonna follow progressively the same 
path as, as our other orthogonals. So they're going to kind of radiate out from the, the vanishing point there. But the horizontal lines that are facing us are going to remain straight. So sketching some cross hatching contour lines across the top of our box can really help us to see what's happening there as well. And, you know, every window or door or anything that might be happening on like a house is gonna, gonna do that. So just to go back to one of my one point perspective examples, like that miniature scene here, when I look at, uh, at this scene, so when I'm facing it, this wall straight on, it appears, you know, everything that's facing me just stays straight, right? But then here where I kind of shifted my view, um, well, this is still mostly straight, but the top of the window, the insides of the window, everything is following uh, towards a vanishing point there now. Okay. Um, so that is all I'm going to do for one point perspective. Do you have any questions about one point perspective before I move on to two point perspective? Um, we, it looks like there's a little bit of confusion on what um, orthogonal lines mean, means. Could, could you go over that just really quickly again? Yeah. So the orthogonal lines are the horizontal lines. facing the horizon or traveling away from the viewer. Because in three-point perspective, the orthogonal lines aren't going towards the horizon line. They're going to a imaginary point in the sky or far below um, the Earth. So. Uh, but orthogonal lines are basically the lines that appear diagonal in linear perspective would be an easier way to say it. But in one and two point perspective, it's the horizontal lines facing the horizon or traveling away from the viewer. So that's a little bit different for three point. So in one and two point perspective, it's the only thing that's being affected is the horizontal lines because the vertical lines remain straight in one and two point perspective. The only reason that the, uh, the vertical lines become affected in three point perspective is, well, why? Let's see who is paying attention. What happens to the viewer to create three point perspective? Because this all is based on the viewer. This changes depending on the viewer's perspective or the viewer's point of view. When the, the viewer is looking at a geometric form in one and two point perspective, it appears that the horizontal lines are traveling towards this, uh, this vanishing point or two vanishing points. Okay, so we, we have um, the person is below or over the horizon. Yes, um, exactly. Looking up or down from the object. Exactly. So in three point perspective, the viewer is now looking up at something from far below or they're looking down at something from far above. So, you know, if you're just taking a walk in your neighborhood you're unlikely to see any houses in three point perspective unless there's, you know, a skyscraper in your neighborhood or maybe a three story house and you lay on the ground and you look up at it. You're not likely to see those those vertical lines appear to be affected. Um, it's only going to happen when you're far below something. So or when you're looking down at something from high above. So in a, you know, if you're in a helicopter looking down at, at a house, then you're gonna see that house in three point perspective. But otherwise you're typically gonna be dealing with one and two point perspective. And one point is where you're standing in the middle of something, middle of a road, middle of a hallway, et cetera. Two point perspective is where you're looking at a corner. That's the only difference is your the viewer is standing in the middle or the viewer is standing 
at a corner. So yeah, and I've had architects take my classes who have said, thank you for simplifying that so much because they, the way that they learned it was probably a way more complicated way. So um, if it's still confusing, um, might want to check out the recording later because I don't want to keep repeating myself too much. Um, okay, so two-point perspective. So we're going to draw some boxes in two-point perspective now. And yeah, nothing wrong with repeating a video like this and slowing it down and pausing it and, you know, going, going back until you're really absorbing something. I'm, I've mentioned lots of times so far in this class that I've been learning to play the guitar recently and I have a private lesson teacher and uh, he sends me YouTube videos to watch to, you know, when I'm doing my personal practice at home and when I'm in the one on one class with him, I can tell him to slow down and repeat everything, you know, for me personally, since I'm, you know, paying him for a private lesson. Um, but when he sends me the YouTube videos, I watch them so many times. <laughs> I pause them and repeat them and, you know, go back lots of times because I, I miss it. So that's why it's so great that these classes are being recorded. All right, in two point perspective, we need two points on our horizon lines. We're going to label one. Uh, VP1 and the other one VP2. And this is where I said if you're still getting confused about linear perspective overall, um, I'm going to try turning on, I don't know if I have on the autofocus or not. Maybe it will focus better if it's, if I click that over. Um, okay, so yeah, if you're still lost in at the, the beginning of one point or at the end of one point perspective, oftentimes for whatever reason, people, the light bulb clicks on when we get to two points. So just stick with me and I, I think you'll be okay. All right, so in two point perspective, we're looking at a corner, right? So we need to start with the corner. So the corner is gonna be a vertical line, right? So we're looking at the corner of our box and so we need to start with a vertical line. So I'm going to just line up my ruler perpendicular with the horizon and I'm going to do it right in the middle here. I'm just going to draw a vertical line for the corner of my box. All right, so now everything on this side of my box is going or my horizontal lines that are traveling away from me, the viewer of this box on a corner. These orthogonal lines are going to travel to vanishing point one. And I'm below my horizon line. And by the way, you can erase these lines once we're, we're done drawing the boxes, but just for sketching sake, it's fine to have these here. Uh, there will be another class on linear perspective where I will apply all of this to to an image showing, um, you know, various types of perspectives. So sometimes just drawing the boxes can be super easy, but applying it to a drawing with some architecture is where it becomes more challenging. All right, so everything, the orthogonal lines on this side are traveling to vanishing point one, and these are traveling towards vanishing point two. Okay, now we need to close in the sides of our box. And so we need to close those in with vertical lines, right? Because this side of the box is doing whatever its buddy is doing here. So we've got a vertical line. That's the buddy to that line. And then we've got a vertical line over here and just arbitrarily close it in wherever. It doesn't matter how wide your box is. All right, so now we've got something that looks like an open book. And if I'm going a little fast, this is where you can wait for the recording and pause it and go back, etc. All right, so on the top of the box now, I'm seeing the, the top of the box here because I'm looking down at it. It's below the horizon line. So this side needs needs to be closed in, right? And since this line is traveling towards vanishing point one, 
its buddy is also going to travel towards vanishing point one. So even though we're coming from a corner that's, you know, on the right side of the, the box corner, it still is going to do whatever its buddy is doing. So it is traveling. The orthogonal line goes to vanishing point one there. And on this side, the orthogonal line is traveling towards vanishing point two. Okay, so we could erase all of these extra lines once we're done and we don't need them. And then we've just got our box in two point perspective. All right, now we're gonna do that again, but above the horizon line, So I'm going to start with my corner. I'm going to give myself enough time to do three point perspective. So I'm going to zip it along a little bit here. I'm just doing the exact same thing that I did below the horizon line. I'm just doing it above the horizon line now. And hopefully somewhere in this process, it's starting to make more sense. That's usually the case when people are, are still lost with this, it starts to make sense somewhere at this point. There are so many uh, other tutorials and worksheets that you could find online that would essentially be drawing these various boxes for you so you could keep practicing this and, until it makes sense on a variety of different kinds of boxes. All right, so on this side, it's doing whatever its buddy's doing. So you end up with a rhombus shape on the, the top and the bottom of the box, two point perspective like that. And if you don't press down super hard on your pencil while you're drawing these lines, they're a lot easier to erase. I guess I've been not following my own advice here and drawing my lines pretty dark. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my other example for, for this part, just for the sake of time. Um, same thing with the contour lines. If you take your ruler and trace, you know, kind of radiate out from your vanishing point, you can get those orthogonal lines to show you what would be happening to the contours of this flat side of the box. And in this case, they're all going to be orthogonal. In one point perspective, you still had some some straight lines in there, but here they're gonna they're gonna all follow whatever their buddy lines are doing on either side of the box there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to three point perspective unless there are any questions that are coming up again and again at this point. Um, no, I think we're good to move on. All right, so in three-point perspective, all that's changing is the, the viewer's point of view again. So we're still starting with, we're looking at the corner of some boxes, but now we're looking at the corner of boxes from either far below or far above the horizon line. So we'll start with our horizontal line and we'll get our two points on there for VP1 and VP2. And uh, but before we draw our corners, we're gonna go ahead and introduce this third point, which we're, we call a zenith point. So you don't wanna put it, um, you wanna make sure you can see see the zenith point on your paper when you're drawing these boxes. So you'll draw your corner of your box, your vertical line, and then right above that somewhere, uh, place your, your zenith point. So let's start below the horizon line again. And I'm gonna get my corner of my box going. And then I'm gonna put my, make sure you can still see everything on the screen. I'm gonna put my zenith point right here, just barely on the screen there. 
So that's the zenith. So we are going to have orthogonal lines coming off of this this vanishing point, this zenith point. So that's why I was saying when I was defining orthogonal lines, it's basically any uh, any lines that appear diagonal when the the point of view changes in linear perspective, because uh, now our vertical lines are becoming orthogonal lines. It's not just the horizontals. Okay, but we'll start just like we did with two point perspective. We'll draw our little maypole thing. Always looks reminds me of a, a maypole at this point or power lines. Okay, but now we can't draw the top of the box yet until we um, we figure out where these vertical lines are. So the vertical lines are no longer straight. They are now orthogonal lines that we trace from this zenith point. So I'm going to trace from my zenith point right here to close in the side of this box on either side. Now I can see everything except for the top of this box. And that is going to be closed in just like in two point perspective. So the only new thing here is what's happening to the verticals. And if I were to trace the contour lines on the, the side of my, my three point perspective box, I would see that, so if I was looking at a skyscraper, all of the windows would be affected in the same way. The vertical lines would appear, you know, just like in my, my curtain example, all of the ripples in the curtains they're no longer straight vertical lines. They appear to also be diagonal lines angling towards the zenith point. And the zenith point is not gonna be that close. Um, in the real world, that zenith point is gonna be really far away, right? It's gonna be hard to trace it on a piece of paper. Well, we're just drawing boxes here, so it's easier to manipulate uh, what we're doing. All right, let's do that one more time uh, above the horizon line. And I have to say for anybody thinking that I went fast, everything I just taught you guys, I usually take uh, an hour. I usually take a full three hour class <laughs> to do everything that I just did in an hour here, because usually I talk for a really long time about the art history and, you know, take everybody out in the hallway and like really explain it to death before we start drawing boxes and then drawing the boxes, I walk around and I help people who get stuck. Um, it usually takes a full, well, at least almost two hours. And then we usually get started drawing um, a, some architecture uh, using this, but we usually don't get too far with that because just this tends to take up a lot of time, so. Um, so yeah, my zenith point needs to be far above my horizon line now. So I'll use that to find the sides of my box. So um, Adrian, we have a couple of questions here about the zenith point. Um, do you just choose it arbitrarily or how do you know where it goes exactly? So when we're drawing, you know, boxes, we have to just choose it arbitrarily. But if we were observing um, from a photograph, what we would do is we would, um, well, you'd, you'd have to find it. Off. It's usually going to be way off the page, right? So I would have to trace I'm just going to do it on my desk here. What I like to do is get a piece of tape and tape the photograph down. 
And uh, so find it just, first we gotta find it. So it's way, it's like right here. It's, let me scoop my pencil down. It's like right here above the top of the curtains. And then I'd have to do it on the other side to make sure that the curtains, you know, can be traced to that vanishing point. I will have another class later where I will apply all of this to photograph and show you how to map out, um, you know, any photo with linear perspective, use applying these rules. Um, it, there's just not enough time in this class to go too deeply into that. But yeah, you can use a piece of tape to find it off uh, the photograph on your desk or, you know, tape it down to a larger piece of paper and then trace it so that you can, you know, have it saved and you don't lose it when you move the piece of tape. One time I was helping a student when I taught high school with a photograph that was very highly skewed. And in order to find that vanishing point, we had to run a piece of tape all the way down the length of her table. And she was like, that's okay, we don't have to do it. And I was like, no, we're doing it. We are finding that vanishing point. So it takes a lot of effort sometimes, but it can be done. But also I used some very simplified images here and the world can get very complicated, folks. Um, you can have multiple perspectives visible at once in a photograph. You can have, you know, things can get really wonky depending on your perspective. Like this is an example I just decided not to show because it's so complicated, but it's great to show as far as like how the world gets complicated. Um, because I was in a car and I was holding my camera at a funny angle to get this photograph. So it's not like I, the viewer was standing in a normal way, you know, I was holding my phone at a, a skewed angle. So the vertical lines on the side of these buildings, you know, it is three point perspective, but um, it's gonna be like far above the, the page here, like where I would find where those lines intersect would be really far away. And it's not necessarily that, you know, the person taking the, this photograph, me, the viewer was, you know, standing. So it all boils down to the perspective of the viewer or the perspective of your camera or that particular point of view. And when that is highly skewed, you're gonna have a situation that is much more complicated. So the easiest thing you can do to yourself when you're taking photographs of something that has geometry in it, you're taking a picture of a geometrical form is to stand in one spot where you are facing one side of that form. You know, just be kind to yourself and fix your perspective in a way that doesn't make it wonky. So like this photograph, I'm facing this back wall. So position yourself where you're facing, something is facing you and it's simplified. And then that way you can use that to, you know, help as you, you know, orient yourself in the, in the photo as you, you map it out. But I'll have an entire class on just mapping out um, a photo with some architecture using linear perspective. And I'm sure in that class, I will refer back to this class that just talks about, you know, just the, the basics of linear perspective and drawing these boxes. So if you got lost, you might wanna draw these boxes again until yours are, are looking this way and most things in art are very open to interpretation, but when we're talking about linear perspective, we've got visual math and geometry introduced. So there is a right and a wrong, and you recognize that when you look at a drawing that you know has mistakes in it with this because it looks different than how our eyes perceive the world. Don't even get me started on the neuroscience of optics and our eyeballs, you guys. Our eyes are like <laughs> telescopes. And we're all hallucinating the same optical illusion. <laughs> it's an, the whole entire world is an optical illusion that we are all mass hallucinating together. Isn't that cool? Anyway, thank you all. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And I know we didn't spotlight anybody to see your work tonight, but um, I'm hoping we all just have drawings of you know similar boxes. So feel free to share those on Instagram or where you share your artwork and, and tag make it with Michael's or Michael's classes or tag me so that I can see them. Um, and thanks again. And I'll be back on Wednesday with that intro to graphite and drawing forms class uh, and encore version of that class.
Awesome. Everybody seemed to really, really like it today. Um, I think you clarified a lot of things for a lot of people. So, okay, great. So it was awesome. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you, Jimena. All right, everyone have a good night. Good night. Bye.